Welcome to MathsMaster.org. We're going to have a look now at equivalent fractions. First of all, what are equivalent fractions? Okay, let's have a look at these three squares, of which all three of them have the same proportion shaded in green. So the same proportion of these squares is shaded in green. Now, first up, you might be able to say quite easily that clearly that square on the left has a half of it shaded in green. So we look at that fraction, one half is one over two. Why do we have one over two? Well, the two in the denominator, the bottom number, the denominator, two tells us that we could split that square up into two pieces. And if we did, one of them, which is the numerator, the top of the fraction, one of them is shaded in green. Right, okay, so we could describe the proportion of that square that was shaded in green as one half. But couldn't we also describe it as two quarters? Have a look at that second square, the one in the middle. The same proportion of the square is shaded in green, but this time I've split the square up into four equal size pieces. So there's a four in the denominator, the bottom of the fraction, and there's two of those pieces shaded in. So the numerator, the top number, is two. So we can describe the same proportion of the square as being shaded in with two different fractions. Or maybe actually three different fractions. Have a look at the third square now. Now I've split that square up into 16 little equally sized pieces, little squares, and you'll see that I've now shaded in eight of them. So we could also describe the proportion of that square that's shaded in as eight sixteenths. Okay, so another way of thinking of fractions is as division sums. The top number divided by the bottom number, the numerator divided by the denominator. So one half is exactly the same thing as one divided by two, which if you type it into a calculator or you use short division, you'll see is 0 0.5. But if we look at two fourths or two quarters, if we do two divided by four, you'll notice that we also get 0 0.5. And indeed, if we do 8 divided by 16, we also get 0 0.5. So you'll see that if we look at fractions as being division sums, 1 half, 2 quarters and 8 sixteenths all give us the same answer, 0 0.5. So 1 half, 2 quarters and 8 sixteenths are what we call equivalent fractions. And what I mean by that is... They look different, they've got different numbers in them, but actually they are the same size. What I mean by that is if you think of them as uh, the proportion of the square that shaded in, it was the same for all those fractions, or if you think of them as division sums, we got the same answer when we did numerator divided by denominator on all of them. So they look different, but they're actually the same size. And this is what we mean when we talk about equivalent fractions. Right, okay, let's have a look at how we actually go about finding equivalent fractions. So if I said to you, find an equivalent fraction to three quarters, let's have a look at how we go about doing that. Right, here's a square. A proportion of it is shaded in orange. Three quarters is shaded in orange. As you can see, I've split it into four equally sized pieces. Three of them are shaded in, so three quarters of that square is shaded in orange. Right, an equivalent fraction we could find by taking the same proportion of the square in the second one, the same proportion is shaded in orange, but now I divide it into eight equally sized pieces, as you can see. So eight would be in the denominator of my fraction at the bottom, and now six of them are shaded in orange. So the equivalent fraction would be 6 eighths. So let's have a look at what we actually did there. I started off with four equally sized pieces in that first square on the left. And then I said, 
on the square on the right, I've now got eight equally sized pieces. I've, I've doubled it. I've got twice as many pieces in the second square as I did in the first square. And consequently, twice as many of them are shaded in. So you'll notice if I times the bottom number by two, I've also times the top number of the fraction by two. Three times two is six and the bottom number four times two is eight. Let's have a look at what we've done there. Let's take that in. We've taken the top number and we've doubled it to make six, so twice as many pieces are shaded in, but the bottom number, four times two is eight, we've doubled the number of pieces that we started with. So that's how we find an equivalent fraction. Let's have another look. Three quarters is also has an equivalent fraction of nine twelfths, as you can see in this diagram here. You'll notice in the second square now, I've split it into 12 equal pieces, and nine of them are shaded in. So these two are equivalent fractions. I've, from going from the first square to the second, I've used three times as many pieces. I've gone from four equally sized pieces on the first square to 12 on the second square. So I've, I've timesed it by three. I've got three times as many pieces. But then look, three times as many of them are actually shaded in on the second square. So we've gone from three shaded in to nine shaded in. So that's why these two are equivalent fractions. If we times the top number by three, to go from three to nine, we also have to times the bottom number by three and go from four to 12. Okay, so to summarize now, let's have a look at how we find these equivalent fractions. If I said to you, two fifths, can you find me an equivalent fraction? Here's, or find some equivalent fractions. Here's how you go about it. Think of a number, say two, it can be any whole number, say two, and then times the top and the bottom numbers by two. So two times two is four, and five times two is 10. So two fifths and four tenths are equivalent fractions. But maybe you didn't want to times by two, maybe you wanted to times by five. Well, that's fine, as long as you're timesing the numerator and the denominator, the top and the bottom, by the same number, in this case five, you'll get equivalent fractions. So two times five is 10, five times five is 25, two fifths and 10 twenty-fifths are equivalent fractions. You might like to times numerator and denominator by nine, as you can see here. You might even like to times them by 200. It doesn't matter which number you times them by, so long as you times the top and the bottom by the same number. The numerator and the denominator need to be times by the same number. That way you'll get equivalent fractions. Okay, just to finish off, I want you to have a look at this now, where I'm actually using divide by 10 to find equivalent fractions. So up to now, we've been timesing the numerator and the denominator by the same number. It also works if you divide you can't add and subtract, it doesn't work if you use those, but if you times or divide by the same number in the numerator and denominator, that's okay. So 30 divided by 10 is 3, and 50 divided by 10 is 5. So 30 fiftieths is the same, uh, is an equivalent fraction to 3 fifths. Another example would be if I wanted to divide to divide by two. Once again, it doesn't matter what number you divide by, so long as it's the same in the numerator and denominator. So 30 divided by two is 15, 50 divided by two is 25. One thing you do need to bear in mind when you are using division to find equivalent fractions is obviously you need to choose a number to divide by that's a factor 
of both the numerator and the denominator in that first fraction. So with 30 fiftieths, I couldn't divide by, say, 17, because it's not a factor of 30 and it's not a factor of 50. If I did that, I'd get decimal numbers, and we don't like decimal numbers in fractions. So just bear that in mind if you are going to use division um, to find equivalent fractions. OK, so to summarise, equivalent fractions, what are they? Well, we've seen that they're fractions that look different, but they're actually the same size. They're describing the same size. Okay. How do we find them? Well, we multiply or we divide the numerator and the denominator of the fraction by the same number. And that can be any whole number. That was how to find equivalent fractions. If you want to see some more fantastic videos, please visit mathsmaster.org.